video you are about to see chronicles an achievement by students of the School of Engineering and Technology, California State University, Los Angeles. A feat of design skill, creative teamwork, engineering excellence. This achievement stands both as an example of the ideals of the school and as an unprecedented attainment for the university. Further, it is an innovative step forward in mankind's fight to preserve his fragile ecosystem. Hello, I'm Michael Gross. As automotive designers face the 21st century, they become ever more aware that old ways of thinking must change. Fossil fuels from which oil and gasoline are made are disappearing. Control of limited supplies continues to create strife among nations. Using fossil fuels causes catastrophic damage to the environment and destruction to the atmospheric shell that protects the Earth. I'm here because of my deep interest in protecting our planet and its frail beauty for generations yet to come. Likewise, concerned engineers and technologists know they must find alternative solutions to old technologies in order to save the Earth and yet keep it running. Unfortunately, recognizing the problem is not enough. We need more. We need dedicated and creative students who, with training and vision, will protect our environment as they confront the technological challenges of the 21st century. Where will we find them? Late in 1988, General Motors challenged American colleges, universities, and trade schools to build solar-powered cars to be entered in competition in July 1990. The race, some 1,650 miles, was to take 11 days from Lake Buena Vista, Florida to Detroit, Michigan, home of GM's technical center. The objective was to demonstrate that the sun's energy could power road vehicles. I don't think you'll ever see solar-powered automobiles mass-produced. I think they'll be something that spawns electric vehicle technology and, and pushes us into even other alternative fuel vehicles, uh, renewable energy source vehicles. I think that the best technology that could come out of this is for the electric cars that are going to be hitting the market in the next 10 to 15 years. 32 cars were finally accepted into the GM Sun Race USA. Cal State LA was one, and soon there began the incredible challenge of designing and fabricating the Solar Eagle and forming a team that would virtually breathe, think, and work together incessantly for the next year and a half. I started on this project last March of 1989. I started it with the idea of just doing it for a junior design project. It was a two-unit class. And uh, Professor Berto came into the class the first day and suggested topics to do, such as designing the gear train or the uh, suspension system for the Solar Eagle. Uh, none of that really appealed to me. So I decided to uh, do something with aerodynamics, uh, which was design the shape of it. and. Uh, I performed about three months of wind tunnel studies and started to enjoy that and also started to um, design one of my own ideas and I hoped that that would be picked with, by the team. It was and uh, consequently we've been building it ever since. Gradually this team of dedicated men and one woman came together to figure out every detail of a complicated design, to modify, to rethink, and to create a car that would run on the power of the sun, a task with which none of them had ever had experience, led by faculty advisor and chief engineer, Professor Richard Roberto, and student team leader, Derek Hamilton. Uh, it's unbelievable. You, you just uh, come in here late at night, you'll, you'll see them uh, still here. One, two o'clock in the morning, they're still here, they're still working, they're, try they're still trying to figure uh, 
you know, things out and uh, come the next day and they're, they're here. Uh, so th those people are definitely dedicated. I mean, that's uh, one thing the school should be proud of is that uh, they actually found 15 or 20 guys that were uh, that dedicated to something like that. The Solar Eagle is a solar electric vehicle, not solar thermal, as uh, the main application of solar energy is usually done uh, in heating water for houses. What it does is it converts the light energy, not the heat energy, into electricity for the car's batteries. And then the car uses those batteries, the, the power in the batteries, to run the motor, which makes the car move forward. In order to do that, you need to have a frame to support the structure, and you need to have wiring in order to get the power from one place to another, and switches to, to control the certain vehicle functions. And you need a body so that you can keep the wind moving around it pretty efficiently. Ultimately, the car would evolve into four structural elements. A frame, a body, the canopy, and the solar array, each painstakingly designed, built, and tested by Cal State LA engineering and technology students. As the vehicle took shape, the team realized they were building not just a passable, but a great car, and a highly competitive entry for GM Sunrace. All across the country, other schools prepared to race against them. The Kalakwaneha of Clarkson University, Galaxy from MIT, the Sunshine Special of Florida Institute of Technology, Starduster, Worcester Polytechnic from the state of Maine, San Luis of Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, the Soul Sation from the University of Pennsylvania, and 25 others. This would be no soapbox derby, but a competition among the best talents in the United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico. As time drew short, the Solar Eagle team, sometimes working round the clock, resolved the final problems, tested performance, primed, painted, and polished. And they began answering the most often asked questions. What makes it run? Solar energy. How does it work? First of all, you have your solar panel, which takes the energy and um, takes the solar energy, converts it to electrical energy, um, sends them to the peak power trackers, which we have, which optimizes uh, the voltage coming from the peak power, coming from the solar panel, which then uh, puts stores the energy into batteries. This battery is now available for the motor to use at any time, uh, just by hitting the throttle. And um, that's pretty much it in, in a nutshell, simple, oversimplified. So, after nearly a year and a half of work, the Solar Eagle team, ready to make its first 